Hey guys. So I'm over here on the Monarch, and what I decided to do this morning was go ahead and make a test cut with a piece of material here coming out of the chuck and see if we can see some differences. You know, machining taper and that kind of thing. Uh, kind of check the level of the machine. Not really sure what to expect, but we're going to give it a shot here. So, this is a piece of 400 series stainless steel that I've had. 400 series actually always machines really nice. It's got carbon added to it. It doesn't, it doesn't machine like a 300 grade stainless. Usually pulls a really nice chip off. So this is just going to be a sacrificial piece of material, but we're not taking a whole lot of metal off of this. So what I'm going to do, I've got, I've got the, uh, the center of it marked here, and we'll come in here and we'll undercut it. So I'll have a place on each end that I can make a cut. And this is sticking out about 11 and a half inches, so we're almost at a foot there. We'll, uh, we'll use this tool here to make the undercut. That's a CNMG insert. And then whenever we make a, our, our test cuts, I'll just use this turning tool here, another CNMG insert. So this is kind of like a, a, a response to some of the guys that's asked me if I was gonna do this. I told you guys I will. And I'm, I'm curious to see how it does also. So if we get some differences, we may, depending on how bad it is, we may try to tweak the lathe a little bit. I've got to admit that I've never done that before. So whenever I watched Tom Lipton do it, it was sort of a learning experience for me because I had never made a cut and, and then actually moved the ways a little bit to get some twist out of it. So we'll play with it and see what I can come up with, all right? We'll go ahead and get set up and make an undercut. All right, I've already got this piece trued up. Trued it up here and here. Got it running within about a thousandths of an inch. So we're gonna go ahead and make an undercut. I've got the lathe set at 21,000 speed rate. I'm gonna spin it at 420 RPM. Just make us a nice little undercut here. So I undercut it 30 thousandths, and we're going to use my steric 2 to 3 mic here. I'm going to go ahead and just get a reading on it just to see where we're at. 2 inch 437. So it's right on. Uh, I said 2 inch, I'm sorry, 3 inch 437. Three and seven sixteen. So we'll start. We'll try a five thousandths cut. See how it does. We don't want to make much push off when we do this. All right, get a zero set here. Dial in five. Did slow the feed rate down. I'm running about seven and a half thousand feed rate. Take a measurement.
Okay, four thirty one and four tenths. All right, that's four thirty and four tenths. So I'm getting one thousandths taper. I'm getting a I'm getting a thousandths difference. Not not too bad right there, but it is off. And I would assume that's not pushing off off the tool. It's just a five thousandths cut there. And that's why I went with a, a larger piece of stock so that it would uh, maximize the rigidity of the workpiece here. Alright, so I went and got my stared 18 inch precision level, set it back up on our one, two, three blocks. I made sure everything was clean and the level is still showing by sight near perfect. So what I'd like to do on the outer end I was one thousandths larger. So what I'm gonna attempt is to just slightly move the two jacking bolts on this side of the uh, tailstock in here just slightly and then we'll make another test cut and see if we uh, helped or hurt ourselves or didn't change anything at all. Alright so I'm gonna I'm gonna screw them down just a little bit not much. You can see a slight bit of difference in the bubble now. So let's uh, reposition and make another test cut. All right, I'm going to dial in another five thousandths. Use a little bit of our cutting wall here to maybe help with that surface finish there. Still getting some push off down here on this end. Okay, let's go ahead and get a reading and compare our results. I'm just going to go right in the middle for now. All right, 426 and two tenths. All right, 425 and three tenths. So we're basically still a thousandths off there. So it doesn't look like our adjustment really help much. What I'll do, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna I'm gonna raise it up just a little more, not much, and we'll make another test cut and see if we get any difference. Alright so I made my adjustment and basically all I'm doing on this pass is just making a spring cut. I didn't dial it in and on this end here it's it's shaving a little bit but it actually made a little cut on the outer end here. So, let's check it again. It looks like I removed a little more metal on this end. Okay, 424 and five tenths. Four twenty-four and six tenths. Man, that got us close right there now. Two tenths off, man. You can't 
it's hard to complain with that. Now, what I'm wondering, you know, will it maintain that that type of uh, straightness if you come back in here and make another cut? So that's what I want to try. I'm going to go ahead and dial in uh, another 5,000. So let's make a cut and compare our readings and, and see if it's kind of consistent with that. Five on the dial, here we go. Just a little bit more shop fragrance going on. And we'll bring it back. Okay, I made another cleanup cut here. I took another five. Let's prepare our readings again. Uh, I'm going to call it 419 and 9 tenths. Four nineteen and eight tenths. I got it within a tenth that time. I think that's pretty dang close, guys. So I, I believe that helped me there, raising up the tailstock end just slightly. We made two very fine adjustments. And on the bubble, what I have done is it's moved to half a line. The bubble is usually uh, halfway. Whenever it's centered, you're halfway between the lines. So I've moved it this way to touch the, the, the the uh, wide line there. All right, guys, just to kind of conclude, I just took another measurement to verify my first readings, and right now, as we sit, I'm one tenth of a thousandth difference between these two journals that I just machined here. And that is a, uh, it's not quite 12 inches. I'm going to call it 10 inches center to center, so uh, a tenth of a, a difference every 10 inches. Now, what what it would do if I move this all the way back here and do some machining, that's a different story. It could change on you. But what I'm focused on right here is most of my work is done on this chuck in, and sometimes I have some long work pieces like this right here that I'm having to bore and turn and do some machine work on for bearing sizes. So I'm actually really happy with this right here because in the past, I actually was getting a little bit of taper in the machining on the chuck in without using the tailstock. So I had figured that it was possibly the level and the twist in the, in the lathe that I had not gotten out. So uh, I'm happy with it. And I've, I've got an idea to maybe come back at a later time and play with the tailstock. The tailstock's a whole other story because that thing does have some wear on it and it actually sits slightly low uh, off center. And We've already done some work on it in the past, but uh, that's going to be for another video. Uh, maybe we can come back and do some work on this tailstock and try to get it in proper alignment with the spindle here. Okay. So, all right, that's our Monarch test cuts. We're within a tenth, of, a tenth of a thousandth on a 10-inch span. I think we're good to go. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I had fun. It's something that's uh, been on my mind, so. That's it, guys. We'll see you on the next video.